Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I want to bring to you a little Bible study talking about the day of the Lord. I asked the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to read this morning? And I just went to quick nav and kind of did like this with my mouse on the laptop mouse. Without looking, I just clicked because I wasn't sure. I didn't feel led, you know, to this book or that book. So anyway, I believe I read this last week. And it's, I thought, mighty strange, you brought me here again. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm supposed to teach on it. I think maybe some people might be confused as to exactly when the day of the Lord is. What is the day of the Lord? Well, this much, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's not just one day, all right? It is a time period of things happening. So I'm going to start reading a part of the first chapter of Zephaniah, starting with chapter 2. Chapter, it's Zephaniah 1, starting at cha uh, verse 2, because the first part is like a, a historical uh, names, bunch of names listed. All right. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. Now, this is specifically talking to Jerusalem, but if you keep listening, you will see that it pertains to us and the rest of the world as well. He says, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. He will cut off man from off the land. And do you really think he's just talking to Jerusalem? No. Verse 4. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah. And upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. See here he says, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah. Judah is the southern part of Israel. Back when they belong, it belonged to the twelve tribes. The tribes of Judah and Benjamin occupied the southern part of Israel. The other ten tribes occupied the northern part. This is where they get the name Jews, but really they were Judeans, Benjamites, and all the other Danites, uh, Malik. Uh, let's see, there's uh, there was yeah. Simeon, Reuben, so Reubenites, Simeonites. You see, all right. So he says, "I will stretch out mine hand upon Judah." And upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal. Those are the false god worshippers, the remnant of Baal, from this place, and the name of the Chimerims with the priests. Why would he do that? Because they weren't worshiping him first, they were given over to Baal. And uh, whoever the Chimerans worshipped, even if they were priests of the temple. And them that worshipped the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm. Okay, so he's talking about stretching out, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah, and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the Chimerims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven. Who's the host of heaven? It's not Father God and Jesus, okay? This was Zephaniah back in the Old Testament. Who is the host of heaven? It's not capitalized. 
I'm on verse 5. I'm going to the NASB because it capitalizes all proper nouns, proper pronouns. All right, so the host of heaven is small h and small host, small h in heaven. Probably the fallen angels. The fallen angels were the Greek gods of mythology. That was not a myth. All that you read about in, in, in Greek mythology was true. They were fallen angels that took on the names of Zeus and uh, the seed of Aphrodite, Jupiter, Mars, and a lot of the planets were named after them. Okay. Or they took the name of the planets. I'm not sure about that. Because I know that in Job, God is asking Job and he's kind of complaining to the Lord a little bit. You know, like, why are you letting this happen to me? He says, how can you talk to the potter that made you? Were you there when I placed Orion in the skies? Now that's an English translation. In the literal Greek, or Hebrew rather, it would be Hebrew. It might say something else. But that's another study. You can do that yourself. Go to Job or type in scriptures using the word Orion. You can find it and find out for yourself what it was called in Hebrew. Moving on. We're talking about the day of the Lord here. Verse 5. And those who bow down on the housetops to the host of heaven... And those who bow down and swear to the Lord, and yet swear by Milcom, which is their king, Malcolm, also is spelling it Milcom in an NASB 95, but over here in the footnote it's spelled M A L C A M, probably a variant spelling of Milcom. Okay. And those who have turned, listen to this, this is what's going on today. Verse 6, and those who have turned back from following the Lord, they're following someone else. They used to follow the Lord. They think they still do, but they don't. They are now part of the new world order. And those who have not sought the Lord or inquired of him. So you have those who are perfect. They're savable still. But they don't want anything to do with the Lord yet. And let's pray for those people that are still reachable. Verse 7. Be silent. This says new paragraph. Be silent before the Lord God. The footnote says. Usually rendered Lord. See, Satan is considered Lord of the fallen so I just assume they not use the word Lord but we know that our God is the Lord of Lords be silent before the Lord God for the day of the Lord is near for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice and it's all capital L's here he has consecrated his guests then it will come about on the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes, the king's sons, and all who clothe themselves with foreign garments. I'm going to pause a second here and say someone sent me a video to watch. I think it was Paul and Adrian's um, off-grid off desert farming with Paul and Adrian. And it had a picture of the Queen of England, Charles, the father of the two boys that are now grown, that were Diana's. It's got his new wife beside him. It's got all, it's like a family portrait showing this ghastly garb that they wear to show well, how high and mighty they are. And the video is called, and it's on Rumble, you won't believe what goes on in uh, whatever the castle's called. I can't remember the name of it. I will link it for those of you who are interested. I, I will try to find it and link it. 
because I want to use that picture for my custom thumbnail because it shows how even today the king, the queen, king is dead, the queen of England and her children, her son, daughter-in-law, she's dressed okay, uh, but you know those women, they wear those hats that have the ridiculousness coming off of them, and the boys are in, the grown boys, they're wearing those, all those medals and ribbons and such. Okay, moving on. And I will punish on that day all who leap on the temple threshold, who fill the house of their Lord, their Lord. It's a small L, and it also says, or, capital L, Lord. So some people, their Lord is not our Lord. They might think he is. They might believe he is. Because they gave their life over to Jesus at some point. Said a prayer after someone even got water baptized. Believe in once saved, always saved. And that nothing they do will cause them to fall away. Not even taking the you know what. You see the problem with that doctrine? Right there. Right there is problem number one. That people who believe that with all their heart because they've been taught it since they were born again that nothing can snatch them out of the hand of God that their sins are forgiven past, present, and future that nothing they do can add to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ no amount of good works no amount of repentance no amount of anything that you cannot add to or take away from the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that's what they believe. Here's the thing of it, though. They're kind of right. It's kind of right. But Jesus and then Paul went on to explain what a full-on commitment to the Lord means. You're walking out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're treating others the way you want to be treated. You're loving God most. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're not denying the power of the Holy Spirit. You're not refusing to believe that the gifts of the apostles are for you. They are for you. Jesus seeks an intimate relationship with you. You are intimate with him when you pray in your heavenly language. And they don't want to hear that. No, they don't know how. I don't have that gift. I don't want that gift. Why would I want to pray in something? I don't know what I'm saying. It's an attitude problem. You should want it. If you can't pray in the Spirit, you should want to. And be asking for it. Be on your face. Fast. Beg. I'm telling you what. It proves to the Lord you really want it. Gone are the days where I can say, I want you to go to your local assemblies of God and let them lay hands on you so you can speak in tongues. No. You can't trust the people in the brick and mortar churches anymore. You don't know who's a witch or a warlock or, or a, a Satanist that's been sent there to curse the pastor and the people that go there. I went to one I know it firsthand. I saw the church fall. I saw, I heard, came down with a severe, fast-growing cancer. His wife had to take him to a, she took him to one of those cancer centers of America. And they, and through prayer and that, medicine, they use holistic and traditional and whatever your spiritual beliefs are, his being Christian, totally fully saw, sold on Christ, Christian. He used that, but he was cursed. Our church was cursed by witches, Wiccans that claim they're good witches. We were cursed because of what he preached. He taught us about witchcraft and Wiccans, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, 
the Catholic Church, he was Catholic too, just like me and just like some others there, just like many of you. They are a cult. They taught us you had to be Catholic to go to heaven. That is a cult. By all standard definitions of the word cult, they tell you if you don't belong to this group, you will not go to heaven because everybody else believes in error. Moving on. Verse 9. Let's see, I think I said that. Who fill the house of their Lord with violence and deceit. Right. I think that small l is properly put and it means Satan, their Lord. If you're not serving Jesus Christ and his Father, God Almighty, and including the Holy Spirit in your praise and worship and your, your belief system, you are serving the other small l. On that day, declares the Lord, there will be the sound of a cry from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar. That's capital M. See, it means a district of Jerusalem. For all the people of Canaan will be silenced. All who weigh out silver will be cut off. That's, that's a prophecy for this country in Jeremiah. All the merchants will be cut off. And when this country burns, there will be ships sitting out at sea with stuff to bring. And they'll be weeping and wailing. Now who's going to buy our stuff? That's what it says. It will come about at that time. You read Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51. That's about America. They just didn't know to call it America. It's Mystery Babylon. Verse 12. It will come about at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are stagnant in spirit, who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good or evil. Moreover, their wealth will become plunder, and their houses desolate. Yes, they will build houses, but not inhabit them, and plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. They will plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. Yeah, our houses, if they're not burnt down, will be taken over by the Chinese. Those of you who are left behind that don't make the first fruit rapture, you will see some of this happen. If, it, if the areas that aren't burnt down or filled over with water, the beautiful houses be left uninhabited. And the Chinese will take them over. That's my prediction. Because we know they're going to try to attack us. Whatever's left of us. It's, it's just... People have seen it in dreams and visions. Not just the Chinese, but the Russians. Together. They're already... They got us surrounded. The Lord has given messages to many. that says we're surrounded already. And they're in our country already. And that, I know for a fact, is true. They've been here. Near is the great day of the Lord. Near and coming very quickly. See, back then, it was spoken. It was given to Zephaniah to write it, but it wasn't really near then. But that word is for today. Listen, the day of the Lord in it, the warrior cries out bitterly. A wrath, I'm sorry, a day of wrath is that day. A day of trouble and distress. You could substitute the word time. A time of trouble and distress. A day of destruction and desolation. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and the high corner towers. 
verse 17. I will bring distress on men so that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Who do you think he's talking about? After the multitude too large to number, shown in Revelation 7, at the sixth seal, goes up to heaven. All that's left are the evil who refused Jesus and his Holy Spirit may be still unvaxxed and the vaxxed. Okay, verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them on the day of the Lord's wrath. And all the earth will be devoured in the fire of his jealousy, for he will make a complete end, indeed a terrifying one, of all the inhabitants of the earth. So you see why we need to fully commit to the Lord, lest we be tempted. In the Lord's Prayer it says, Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. That word temptation also means experiment. Think about that. Now I have pulled up here. I did a word search on the day of the Lord. Here are the verses that contain the words, the day of the Lord. Isaiah 13, 6. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Isaiah 13, 9. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel, with fury and burning anger, to make the land a desolation and he will exterminate its sinners from it. I'll do one more from the Old Testament and then I'm going to skip to the New Testament. Ezekiel 30 verse 3 For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. That's the whole world. Oh, there's so I could read them all. You can type in the day of the Lord. In you can either, you can try it on Google search, your favorite search engine. But I went to blueletterbible.org. I typed it in the little bar, and you have to have the words exact, or you won't get a result. But when you put in the day of the Lord you get 17 verses from mostly the Old Testament and a few from the New. And then you get a whole bunch after that that are using the words the day of the or the Lord. And those, you know, they don't mean the same thing. So I'm going to skip to... Oh, they're all good. I mean, they're all just confirmation after confirmation for each other. The last one in the Old Testament is Zephaniah 1.14. Near is the great day of the Lord, near and coming very quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord, in it the warrior cries out bitterly. Now, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5. I have decided to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord or the day of the Lord Jesus is how it's put in NASB 95 but the footnote says early manuscripts do not contain the word Jesus. It's just the day of the Lord, depending on your version. First, see, TH would be Thessalonians. 
5, verse 2. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. You see, that coming upon you suddenly that you will not know the day or the hour is referring to the day of the Lord when the multitude too large to number goes into heaven. Right there is proof of that. So those people who are trying to figure out the day, don't get on their back. Don't belittle us if we share it. Because we are called to watch. Watch, therefore, lest you be not found ready. All right, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 2. That you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Why is he saying this? This is Paul. It's talking about the apostasy, for the apostasy must come first, before the day of the Lord. That's Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Shall we go to it? Okay, let me read the last one and then we will. Second Peter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. All right. The heavens will pass away with a roar. See, that's why we know it's not just a day. Because at that time, you see in Revelation chapter 6, there's a great earthquake. I believe that's when the dead in Christ will rise. Then those who are alive and remain, the word remain means has survived, will meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. What else is going on? The leaders, the rich men, the mighty men, there's going to be poor, probably servants, military, will go with them into the mountains. Those are the deep underground military bases, people. I know it in my heart. They go into the mountains. They cry out, rocks fall on us. That's what John saw and heard. Are they running from a tsunami? Are they just running from the judgment of the Lord? Because they realize the great day of the wrath has come. And who is able to stand? All right. So the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. That's 2 Peter 3.10. If you want to do a study on that chapter, just read it. Now we're going to go, I'm going to click on 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. A lot of you have heard this already, but some of you may have not. It's titled, The Man of Lawlessness. 1 Timothy 2.1 I'm sorry, Thessalonians. It's not Timothy. It's T-H. Thessalon 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and are gathering together to him. He's referring to the second rounders. That you not be quickly shaken from your composure. Or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message. That's, that's a spirit can be a demon. Spirit could be the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit's never going to lie, okay? But it's a small s. So I'm thinking demon. Wouldn't you? Or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. You see, when we are taken out of here, first fruits, bride of Christ, 144K, that is not the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord has not come yet. So he, Paul, is telling the rest of the church that's left behind, do not be quickly shaken. Because the day of the Lord has not come yet. He says, 
that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a messenger or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you. Don't let them deceive you with lies that aliens took us. If that wasn't the rapture. Aliens took them and your babies. Do not be deceived, for it will not come, that is, the day of the Lord, the time for the second rapture, the multitude too large to number, unless the apostasy comes first, and that is a two, it's a two-edged sword. The word of God is a two-edged sword. This is a double meaning here. We know now this is the taking away of the bride and the falling away of the church. This is the year of the sin of ignorance. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. How sad is that? I take in the ABJ. You know what that is. That's what somebody told me they call it now. The V. If you take it, oh well. You're lost forever. So, Sally Tolly. No, I don't mean to make a joke of it. I am really sorry. I cried tears. The Lord surely has buckets of tears of mine stored up, not just little bottles. I've cried tears for all the loved ones who have taken it. And now, no amount of repentance or detox is going to help. No amount of detox is going to help. Do you understand me? Put up a video on BitChute about that yesterday. You can check it out. BitChute.com My channel is Truther, all caps, 2.0, no spaces. Truther 2.0, all caps, no spaces. Let no one in any way deceive you. Verse 3. For it, the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. That's the second requirement. Barack Hussein Obama. Is, the Lord has told so many of us. I got a message twice. People have gotten messages, words, dreams, visions. They know. We know he has been revealed, but not to the world. He told Trump what to do. He's telling Biden what to do. And there was a video put out. It was like nine seconds long with Biden saying, I am not your president. Trump is still your president. And as us Catholics say, may God have mercy on our soul. For real. I did not share it. I just... It's on YouTube. Okay, verse 4. Talking about the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God. The third temple is really the One World Trade Center. They, they do burn animal sacrifices on top of it. But they're to Satan. They're not to God. They are the Jews who say they are Jews but are not. They are Satanists. They're Zionists. They are not true Israelites. Do you got that? So if you are left behind after the first fruit's departure. Do not, under any circumstances, let yourself be deceived again, or not again, because you weren't already, like the first batch that fell away. Do not let yourself be deceived. You may lose your job. You may lose your home. You may be homeless. You may have to sleep in a tent. You may have to sleep in your car. Maybe it's paid for and you won't lose it. 
That's better than a tent. You can at least run it for a little while, put some heat on, if you can afford the gas. Whatever happens, you will must trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, Jesus Christ, Father God, and their Holy Spirit. And they will direct your paths. They will tell you where to go, where not to go. They will put a check in your spirit. This is why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask for it now. Don't wait. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be able to discern who's lying to you and who is not. He sent his Holy Spirit for a reason. On the day of Pentecost, it really grieves me that people still deny the gifts of the Holy Spirit because their pastor told them that the gifts died out with the apostles. They're no longer for us. We don't have to pray in a foreign language. We all know English. Why would you want to pray like that? You don't know what you're saying. I don't know what all they get told. I just know it's a real turn off when you talk about it with certain people. I got told by sharing it with my family what I'm telling you now. The Satan is using me, basically, this is a nutshell version. Satan is using me to cause division in the family. But this is nothing but Satan. Yeah. Right. I said, I will never, ever ever speak for Satan. I tell you the truth. You can choose to listen or not. All right. I didn't mean to get emotional. It's just a touchy subject to me. Why people want to keep denying the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You need them. You need them, brothers and sisters. You need the discernment, wisdom, they, the Holy Spirit helps you with knowledge. He will give you understanding of the Word of God when you read it. He will drop knowledge into your spirit. Like you will have a sudden understanding of something that's going on. Do you get that? That's, that's spiritual. That's supernatural. And a lot of that comes from the Holy Spirit working in you. So please ask Jesus to fill you full, full to the brim with his Holy Spirit. If you can't pray in tongues after that, you just ask for it. You have to want it. You can't have a block about it, a block, a spirit of doubt, a spirit. There is a blocking spirit. You tell that thing to get out and go to the dry places in Jesus name. That you want what God has for you. We should all want whatever, excuse me, whatever God has planned for us. It should never be a turn off to hear about it. It should never be a thorn in your side to be told that. And if it is, you have a problem. And you need to take it up with the Lord before it's too late. Because once the first fruits is out of here, we are all already filled with the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. There may be some who do not because they have a spirit of a blocking spirit, something they were taught, they don't even consciously, they aren't consciously aware of it. And it will just fall off when they get their glorified body. So I am not going to sit here and say, if you don't pray in tongues, you're definitely not going in the first fruits. 
I'm not going to say that. God knows your heart. He knows what you desire. He knows what you've said. Oh, no, thank you, Jesus. I don't want no part of that. I would dare say you're not going. Unsubscribe, I don't care. I'm here to tell the truth. I was called over 10 years ago to get on YouTube and start telling the truth about what people are being taught in the pulpits. And now I'm being told to tell the truth about the medical stuff. So you can believe it or not, but I pray you will. I pray that we are all counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our soon coming groom. Are you part of the bride? Maybe you're one of the guests. The wise virgins, they're left behind, but they're ready. They're waiting. We've been here. We've helped them. We've gotten them saved and cleaned up. We've gotten them delivered of all their demons. We've filled them with the Holy Spirit. So now they pray in the Spirit and they have other gifts and they will take over where we left off when we return to heaven. We will come back with Jesus in the clouds to get them and the dead in Christ that rise. You get that? That's how it's going to fall. That's how it will work. Okay, this has gone on 41 minutes and a half now. I'm going to end it with, I plead the blood of Jesus over every word spoken and over everyone who hears this message. And, and I pray that you will consider sharing it with anyone that might listen to a long video. I personally don't tend to watch long videos. I don't normally try to do long videos. I just felt led to do this lesson because the Lord showed me this Zephaniah 1 through 3 last week or so, and he brought me there again today. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll do a teaching on it. And it led to the teaching on the day of the Lord. So I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections. Mine is still not great. I'm calling them back today. They gave me new equipment. And it's still not right. I, I don't know. I, I rebuke demons out of my stuff. I plead the blood of Jesus over it all every night. I hope you do the same. But I do it for you too. And I pray that the Lord will honor that for you because some of you have not been doing it. Some people don't know to do it. And they won't see this. Not all the way through. All right. With that, I'll say bye for now. I pray you have a lovely day or night whenever it is you see this. And I hope I get to meet you soon so I can give you a real hug. I want to still have that big hug fest I used to talk about all the time before my channel got taken down. They pulled two of my videos, by the way, but didn't give me a strike. Because they were up before the three months I didn't have a channel under Jeannie Hardesty. Be sure you subscribe to my other channel because if this one goes down, everything else will get put up on Jeannie Hardesty 2.0. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.